kings, queens, and beautiful people watch this channel. Today, I'm doing an anime review on a 2006 action senin series, Black Lagoon. Now, there's two reasons I'm doing this series, because I feel like if you like the likes of Quentin Tarantino films or these high action kind of animated series, you'll enjoy this. Also, if you've seen the likes of Jormungand or Gangster as well. Um, as well as the fact it's not a very long running series, there's 24 episodes plus a season 3 OVA. So, I'll jump into it. Now, the premise of Black Lagoon, which I took some off, off wiki, it basically follows this group of pirate mercenaries known as Lagoon Company, and they basically smuggle goods all around the South China Sea. This sort of series is written written around the 90s, based around the 90s, and most of their operations are in this depraved fictional city of Ranipur. Like, it has drugs, it has mafias, it has, you know, assassins, prostitutes, gunmen, basically a crime-ridden city as if there ever was one, right? So that's what the Lugu company does, it transports goods for various clients in their boat. Usually most of their dealings have to do with the Russian Mafia though. Now the story starts off with the character Rokia, Rokuro Okajima, basically your typical Japanese businessman, you know, hates his job, always getting his ass kicked by his bosses, and one day he's literally just sent to transfer some files or some CD or whatever with the plans he doesn't particularly know of. Um, and whilst on the boat he is on, he gets that boat gets hijacked by the Lagoon company and obviously he's kidnapped by them initially after a whole lot of shenanigans happen in the first two episodes he eventually kind of becomes basically a member of this lagoon company and again the series then follows all their adventures whether it's dealing with the russian mafia the yakuza the chinese triad or whatever villain or other characters they come across now i'm going to go through each character we have rock as i've described beforehand he's kind of the outsider to this depraved messed up crime world because like i said he's a straight laced businessman who's never really committed a crime in his life now he's thrown into a situation where he's with again pirate mercenaries group and like in a depraved city where people pickpocket and steal and do all sorts of messed up things whether to survive or for fun that definitely changes as the series progress. Now the main chick that everyone knows the series from and is in the cover for when you look at Black Lagoon is Revy. She is um, literally the girls with guns. She's rude, she's loudmouth, she can pick a fight, she's a good shooter. She is a tough guy girl, you know what I mean? She's the tough girl stereotype in some ways. I mean, some people like her because she, you know, sometimes she was set in very sexualized positions when she's shooting. She is kind of a fun character in that regard. That's one thing I like about the series. Each character generally has a personality. And she's probably the one character who swears a lot. Like, this show, I think, would be straight up in 18s or 15s in some scenarios because of the use of the F word and S word and a lot of other terms, right? They're like the main ones. Revy, gun toting, heavy drinker, heavy fighter, heavy shooter, basically. Really messed up childhood that they go into depth in season three. Now, though, yeah, now there is Dutch. Um, he is the leader, kind of, of this pirate mercenary group, the Lagoon Company. I'm just gonna call it the Lagoon Company. He's, we don't know a lot about his past, but from what I'm gathered, he used to be in the military, and, you know, he's cool, calm, collected. He's able to shoot as well, but he, he always has his head screw on. He's not really just gonna start a fight out no, for no reason. Then Benny is basically their tech and computer guy. It's basically, he was... As he puts in the first episode, he was messing around and things he shouldn't have been and got involved with the FBI until Revy had to save him. Now, there's other side characters in the series that I enjoyed as well. Balalaika, who's from the Russian Mafia, love that character. There's Edda from the Ripoff Church, which is basically Francis' church, but they do a lot of weapons and other illegal shit. And there's a lot of fights I enjoy in this series as well. There's other side characters I could go into, like Chinglish, because I can't remember her actual name, that... Um, Revy refers to a lot. Um, uh, one of my favorite characters, Roberta. You know, she turns up at the end of season one. She is probably the craziest violent chick I've ever seen on TV, or at least on an animated series. So that's what I'd say in terms of character. Though maybe not the most, you know, original ones, they all have at least somewhat of personality to distinguish them from each other. Now, in terms of anim in terms of animation and sound, 
Um, I think for a 13, nearly 4, actually 14 year old anime, I think Black Lagoon still looks pretty good. It's animated by Studio Madhouse. If you've seen my Death Note review, I mentioned other things they've animated. Hunter x Hunter, Attack on Titan, High School of the Dead, Death Note itself. And coincidentally, though I forgot to mention this in the character section, the man who uh, voices Rock in the English dub, the same one who does light in Death Note, which I feel like most people know. Also, the other reason I don't really go into subs and dubs is because I I mostly watch in both, and uh, though if it's an old series, I will watch in dub. Also, this is one of the few series I think works better in the English dub, because most of the characters aren't Japanese. The only character is um, Rock himself. Everyone else is pretty much different ethnicity, so it makes sense they speak English. Um, uh, the music, it doesn't have a long track list of music. I'm going to link the opening and ending below, and they'll be used in the entertainment value section, right? Uh, Red, uh, Mel's Red Fraction, it's a sort of English song, suits within the tone of the song, loads of people love that one. The ending theme for me sounds like background music, it does, it literally is like, compared to the high action of the opening, it just sounds like background music, it's really like, down and kinda depressing, like it just... It's okay, I skip over it though. Most of the music's good, not all of it I love, but it's alright. Also, I sometimes forget the series set in the 90s, but it sets well. Um, I like how the characters are animated, I like how it looks. I feel like, again, for a 14 year old anime, anime, it still stands relatively well. And I'm not just saying the art style I like, it probably does look a bit more like traditional anime in that regard, but yeah. I'd say voice acting was good, even though I'm not an expert in that field. I feel like it's one of those few dubs people don't generally argue about because it was perfectly fine. Music I liked, even if it wasn't my favorite, opening's great. Um, art style I enjoy quite a lot. So all in all, I like a lot about this series. entertainment value. I know I didn't go through every section. The only parts of the series that downfall for me is kind of when it goes into season two. Now, sometimes when you look at Black Lagoon, you can watch all 24 episodes, but they did this in Japan specifically. Usually there's a long break between season one and two, but there's only four months for Black Lagoon. Um, where season one's 12 episodes, season two's uh, 12 episodes. I think the thing is with season two, uh, the characters of Benny and Dutch seem to take more of a backseat to it, um, as well as the fact that, I don't know, the, the character of Revy just seems to change somewhat. Like, it was a sad and depressing ending as well, but and you're kind of like, am I getting more of it? Now, luckily, there is Roberta's Blood Trail, which I feel like I'm going to do a separate video on, just because I've already covered two seasons within this video which is grand, so it kind of continues on the adventures with the Black Lagoon Company. It's kind of mostly just, like I said, it's mostly just season two is not as strong, some of the character, main characters take a backseat, and some story elements I wasn't living for, even though I don't want to be too spoilery. But in terms of an action series that's fun and enjoyable and does have its very serious moments as well, I'd say it's a relatively good series. I'd probably rate it an 8 out of 10, which is quite high for me. It's available on Netflix and Funimation, I believe, if you want to check it out. Uh, from to use a star rating, it's like 4 out of 5. Um, I love it a lot. I'd say most people would probably enjoy it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and check out my next reviews.